There's 3D printing, electronics, lasers, printer corners, and other stuff too. Now you're just going to fit this triangular piece onto the top and it's going to hold everything in place. Um, my rods were maybe a little bit longer right here for some reason. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I just had to snap it in further. So make sure you give it a good push. Um, looks like it holds it in place pretty well. I'm going to double check everything that, it's, that I'm not getting any binding. Yeah, so everything's still moving smoothly, so I'm not concerned there. All right, that's looking pretty good. Very pleased with the look of it. Um, everything seems to be operating as it should. You might want to check all your axes, your belts, your lead screw. Just make sure everything's turning and moving. All right, now we're going to be attaching the forearm and the arm to the assembly. So you're going to drop these uh, hex nuts into the hole here. Um, I usually like to put something on the end so they drop in nice and flush. You might have to poke them in a little bit. What you don't want to do is get them twisted. That makes it no fun. And you push them down as far as they go. If you're not able to insert them in here, um, this is a that'd be a pretty big problem. You print, you might even have to reprint these because when this part's over extruded, there's not a whole lot you can do. So those are in, and then you're going to take a 15 millimeter screw. Uh, there's two holes on the bottom, and then you're just going to tighten them up. We got the screw in there, and I'm just kind of tightening it up. And you should be able to draw that nut down in when you're tightening it. And don't overturn it either, because you don't want to strip that plastic. It's pretty hard to strip because it's fairly long. All I basically did was inserted my screw in. And then started twisting. You can see it kind of catching the nut. And then um, just keep turning it until the nut kind of drops or draws down and once it's nice and tight don't overturn it so that definitely um, steadied that arm up a little bit and then the next step we're just going to take this forearm piece uh, there's a couple of uh, nuts that you have to put in here and then you're gonna you're going to attach it like such so you might have to rotate the belt to get access for these screws to go in so that's all you're doing there. And then the top one, there's no nut. You just put the screw through here. Use these long 40 millimeter screws for this piece. And you should be able to just insert them in and then kind of keep them there. There may be a little resistance once you get to these holes. And then um, you're just gonna insert those square nuts into here. Went ahead and screwed it in and these screws do have to be recessed pretty well because otherwise it's going to hit. So make sure there's clearance and your screw's not going to catch. So that looks good. And then, uh, then you just have one more screw to put in the top here. I did end up using a bigger screwdriver on a couple of these because they were pretty hard to <clears throat> keep going. That's um, biting into the plastic. I think you just want to get it down as far as you can get it. Make sure there's a good connection there. And ideally, if you're using a real small screwdriver, you risk stripping the screw. It's better to use a bigger one. Yeah, I think that's probably about as good as it's going to go. I don't think you want to over tighten it. All right. So that seems to be working pretty well. So at this point, the only thing left is the gripper. Unfortunately, at this point, I realized after looking at some of the pictures 
that um, this is actually upside down. So everything is assembled correctly, it's just upside down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to loosen everything, pull this out, and then flip it over. Okay, luckily, um, it looks like all I'm going to have to do is loosen the belts, take it all the way up, and then flip it. So it wasn't a really too bad of a mistake. Um, a lot of the pictures, you know, I probably just missed something somewhere. But um, the pictures are really up close, so you don't really see some of that. Um, that's kind of par for the course for when I put things together. <laughs> so, so I think all I have to do, based on the, really it's what I'm basing this on is the last picture. So they show it, the very last picture before the gripper, they show a side view of it. And um, I think... I just have to flip it and do this again. So, obviously everything's still kind of there. I'm gonna set that on. And again, be real gentle as you set this, because you don't want those little bearings inside to fall out. And once you set, once you seat it, it should go should twist down pretty good on the Z-screw. Yep, okay. So. Seems like everything's back in. So now I should just be able to lower it into position. Might have to finagle it a little bit to get there. And so I was able to easily get it back on. Now I gotta put the belts back on the pulleys. Uh, I'm going to put this back on first. And I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, board ready. I'm going to put some steppers in. And then uh, I'll put the heat sinks on them as well. So here's the steppers that came in the kit. 4988. You look on the chip carefully okay based on the picture that's provided you want the potentiometers on the steppers to be closest to this esp uh, 12f chip so you're just gonna then the potentiometer is this little screw here that's how you adjust the motor current or the v-ref for the stepper seems like a pretty good fit just make sure they're all oriented the correct way you don't want to get these backwards electronics are not as forgiving <coughs> Okay, and now the next thing we're gonna do is put the heat sinks on. The heat sinks just go right on top of the chips. Just remove that. And then just try to get it nice and centered over that chip. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, and now I'm just gonna try and um, connect this to the board. It looks like it goes, I think it goes like that. These are self-tapping as well. So you just don't want to overturn them. Okay. Sounds like it's in there pretty good. Let's flop around a little bit. Just make sure you get them both nice and tight so they're against the board holding it down. I might have to use my bigger screwdriver. Yeah, that's good. It's not moving now. 